let's make this nice looking image gallery within Brizzy. And not only is it a nice looking image gallery of some abstract photography, but if you click on it, it will open this light box to give you the full image and you can click out on it like this. Let's go into WordPress. Close this one out and we go to WordPress at the dashboard, go to pages, add new. And then for our title, we call this, let me get rid of the caps, level one. And this is 404. And this page is Abstract Photography Gallery. Long name. This is just for our training purposes. We click here on Publish and again, and then Edit with Brizzy. Before we start building that block, I want to point and drag your attention to a few things within Brizzy that is going to help us to style this gallery very nicely, not only in this tutorial, but also in the next one. When you bring in an empty block, our building block within Brizzy, it comes in with some certain default settings supply. Let's begin by clicking here, start building your page, select add the blank block, and let's have a look at what we've got here. The first thing you will notice, our block comes in with padding applied. You see, if I hover here at the bottom, it gives me 75 pixels. That is default for both the bottom and the top. And you can confirm that by going here to the icon, click on settings, and then more settings. And you will see here, it is set at 75 pixels. These are things that you get used to the more you use Brizzy. And I would recommend that if Brizzy becomes one of your staple page builders or your default page builder, that you keep these things in the back of your mind because it will always help you to style better if you know what are those default settings applied. Don't memorize them, you'll get used to it, but be aware that they exist. So just like there are some default settings applied to the block, same for the column. We have two columns here. If I click on this column and I go to the settings, more settings, you will see that there are settings applied for the padding. At the top, we have five pixels. On the sides, we've got 15 pixels. And at the bottom, five pixels. So that space that you see here between the little dotted lines, which is the, well, placeholder container for an element, and the top should be five pixels. Just remember that there's going to be this padding applied all the time to both of these columns. In this tutorial, we work with images. So to bring in a new image, I'm going to click here in the sidebar on Add Elements, and then look for my image element, drag it, and drop it. Now you can see the padding applied if I hover over the image. There's the blue bounding box of the column, and then here is the image. But the image itself also has some default settings applied. Click on the image, settings, and more settings. And you will see now the image has a margin applied to the top and the bottom of 10 pixels each. <sighs> Enough of that mumbo jumbo, right? Just remember that these default settings exist. And you will see as we work during these tutorials, why we will come back to that. We are going to work with three columns here. And I recommend you take some notes. I'm going to take it a tad slower so that you can see what I'm up to. If you can get your head around to how I'm going to design this gallery layout, you will master images in Brizzy like the ABC. Well, I struggled with the ABC when I was a kid, but anyway, um, wasn't as difficult as one, two, 10. If I'm going to work with three columns, just make three columns from the very beginning because it will give you an idea of how things will look. If I go to this column now, I can either add a new one or I can duplicate. Because I'm going to work with the image, I'm going to click just on duplicate. Let's go back to our first column and we click on the image and then to load an image, go all the way here to image, then click on this icon and then you choose this image. The link for these images are in the description below. I use them from FreePick and I've made some changes to them. So if you download and use them from FreePick, they will look a little bit different. So just 
be cognizant of that, that they're going to look a little, a little, a tad little different. Select them and bring them in. Now let's go to the next one. Leave that image. This is the workflow that I highly recommend to you. Click on the next image. Go again to the image box and select one, which is this one, number two. Then add an image element in the third column. Click on add elements, drag your image and drop it. Click on it, image, image, and we choose this one. Number, uh, that's number four. So we choose this one. Let's choose number four. Select. And now I'm going to duplicate this image. Very important, not the column, the image. So make sure you click on the image and then you click on duplicate. You will see that it duplicates the image now within the same column. Go to the second image and click on it, click on the image, delete it, and then let's choose the last one left, which is number three. Select. Click outside to see what you've got here now. Now comes my first step in how to arrange a gallery. Choose one image that you know exactly how big you want it, how wide you want it, and the height you want for it. So I've chosen this image here in the middle. This is going to be my priority image. You can choose any image and it doesn't matter, but I will give you this advice. Choose one, get it right, and then style the others around them. Let me show you. How do I make this image bigger in width? Now width is from left to right. To do that in Brizzy, you grab the column handles. So you see the column handles over here. If I grab it like this, I extend the left. If I grab it like this, I extend the right. And that's how you play around with its width. You are going to be tempted to look at both images when you do this. And I'm telling you, don't do it. Focus on one image and get that image exactly the way you want it. So go first for the width left to right. So I'm going to reduce it a little bit here on the right, and I'm going to increase it a little bit on the left. Well, reduce for this one. Now I'm going to make sure that my image is 100% height, which is full height for the image. To do that, click on the image, go to settings, and here where it says height, type in 100, and it will stretch. Now the image is full resolution. If you click here, you will see the icon and it is a nice replica just in larger scale. Now you go and fix the ones around them. I go to the one on the left, I click on it, and all I'm going to do is grab this handlebar at the bottom and drag it out until I align it here at the bottom, there, and let it go. And the same on this side. I'm going to choose maybe a ratio for this one, like this, and then make this one larger, like so. And it looks so easy, right? It looks very easy what I just did. If you follow the method I just showed you by focusing on one image, get the left to right, then the height, and then you just drag the others into their positions, you won't have a problem. Let's save it, Control, Command S, and then we go view it on the front end by clicking on Preview. It looks good, except for me, there's one thing that will bother me. You'll see the space between the columns is wider than the space between these two images. And why is that? And that is why I showed you the default settings at the very beginning. There is a margin applied to images, 10 pixels at the bottom and 10 pixels at the top, which means if this image, and hold on, if this image has 10 pixels at the bottom and this image has 10 pixels at the top, this space is 20 pixels. But there are paddings applied 
to the columns. Each column has a padding on each side of 15 pixels. So this is 15 and this is 15. I know it's breaking your brain, right? The bottom line is that the space between these two is 30 pixels and these two columns, 30 pixels, but the space between these two images are 20. So we need to give it 10 more pixels. I'm going to do that by clicking on this image. Click on the settings, more settings. And then at the bottom, you can see there is the default 10 pixels. I'm going to increase that to 20, thus adding 10 more pixels. Now this image will extend beyond that line. So I'm going to click on the second image and just drag it in so it can align again with the bottom there. Let's update it, which is save. And then we also go and view it again on the front end. Click on preview and it will load our latest save for us. That looks a little bit more harmonious to me. Let's go and give it that background. Close these two, we don't need them. And for the background that is done within the block, click here on the icon and then you go over here to colors and you choose this one and you will see it's not black. That little marker is over there. This is like a brizzy default color. Let's go for black. We drag it all the way until we see triple zero, triple zero. And now one thing that we are going to add to these images is that effect where you click on it and they can open up into a larger frame. That is called a light box. If you click on the image and you go again to image, you will see the option here, open in light box. So we activate it and we go and do that for all the other images. Okay and activate and the last one open in light box save preview let's see what we've done there we go if you click on it it opens the light box one final question are we done and the answer is no because we have to go and check for yep mobile responsiveness. Let's close this and let's do our mobile first. Thank you, Sterling Williams. Go here to our desktop icon, click on it and choose tablet. And let's see how it looks on the tablet. It's a shrunk down version of our desktop. I don't have a problem with this. I think it's good enough for my tablet view. Let's go then to the next one and click on mobile. In mobile, it's going to look weird. If I hover over this, you will see that there is this space here on the right, but that the image overlaps all the way to the border. Whereas on the left, there is actually the margin applied. Don't care about it. It's just a small little glitch. It will display perfectly on the front end and I'll prove it to you soon. What you care about though, is the space between the images. Do then look uniformly. So I'm going to scroll down. And then when we get to these two, you can see that that space that we had added has been removed. And I can already see that we need to add another 10 pixels. So what I'm going to do is click on this one, go to settings, more settings, and then at the bottom, I'm going to increase it again to 20. And if I cannot get it, there we go. In fact, that looks to me like 30 pixels. So we have to increase it a little bit more up to 30. Okay, I'm just going to type in there and with the arrow on the keyboard, click up to 30 and then it will think and it will apply it. So let me go show you that it will display correctly on the front end. First, we update it by saving it. And then we go and we preview it. What most people do to check for mobile view within their browser is to minimize their browser up here. And then they grab the border like this and they drag it in. And this will reduce the resolution. And then finally you will get to somewhere where it's a tablet. And then the moment it registers as a cell phone, it will do this. And you can see by doing that, that we have the borders on both sides. So it looks correct, even though in the page builder, it overlapped all the way to the side. Right, so I just, restored it there and you can see it overlaps here, but when we minimize it, the black appears there. 
Let me show you a little bit more of a sophisticated way to check for your mobile responsiveness, especially if you are using the Chrome browser. It's going to look like a headache that I'm going to present to you, but bear with me because it's one of those things that if you get the hang of it, it will help you to really work on your responsiveness. While you are in Chrome viewing the page that you want to view for responsiveness, on your keyboard, look at the top where your F keys are. You know, there's F1, F2, and press F12. Once you do that, this scary looking code and all kinds of things will pop here on the right. And you know what? You don't have to care about that. The only part that you're going to focus on is this little icon up here that looks like a phone and a tablet. By clicking on this, it will allow you to view this page as a true representation of how it will appear on a phone or on a tablet. Click on it and you will see it goes immediately into this phone view. Up here, it says responsive and it gives you the pixel settings. You can then click here on this arrow and you will see there are the standard presets for famous phones and devices like the iPhone X. And it will give you the dimensions for the iPhone X. If you want to use a Samsung Galaxy, same thing. If you want to check for an iPad, over here. iPad Pro, over there. And this is a more accurate way of viewing how your page will be displayed on these devices. So remember this because you will think sometimes that the display in Brizzy is the true display and you will only stick with that. But once you come in here, you will find maybe your font here is a little too big or you need to apply a little bit of margin at another spot. So remember this and to get out of it, all you need to do again is click F12 and you go to your normal page. Before we exit, one more thing I want you to do, which we will be using in the next tutorial. Close out here, and then we go here to our desktop, and let's save this entire block so that in the next tutorial, we can load it again. Do you remember how to save a block? You go to the block settings up here, and you click on the heart. And then to check if it has been saved, you can go to add a new block, click on it, and then check under save blocks. And here it appears with the previous block that we had saved in tutorial three. Let's save it just to make sure everything has been locked down. And this way we've created a very nice looking gallery with a light box. If you click on it in the front end, opens the light box. This is JP with Brizzy for Beginners.